Recently, Hideo Kojima tweeted an image of PT with a caption reading, It's been eight years. Ugh, oh, my heart. A Reddit thread started seven years ago quoted Guillermo del Toro. He, referring to Kojima, knows he would be the only guy I would follow to the ends of the earth on anything. I think if anything can be rescued, I will be more than happy. What started as Silent Hills eventually became Death Stranding, which is the video game equivalent of a Taylor Swift breakup song. Since Death Stranding released in 2019, having started from scratch likely in late 2015, then Silent Hills likely would have released in either late 2017 or early 2018. You're watching WASDFM, and my name is Luke the Kook. We're returning to the subject that I started in June. PT was an interesting experience for those fortunate enough to download it during the short window of its existence. For something that only takes less than an hour to explore every nook and cranny, it sure gave us a lot of promise and hints on what we could have seen in a version that expanded on its own lore. It's even more heart-wrenching to learn that if Kojima wasn't going through these harsh experiences with Konami at the time, then PT most likely would not have existed as we know it today. The reference of Lisa looking good in a skirt to get a job was a reference to the Fox engine looking impressive to the suit's economy. Lisa's bloody, uh, groin zone? From either an abortion or giving a forced early birth symbolizes Kojima losing his baby, the Fox engine, or his seat at Konami. The reference at the end of the demo about dad being a drag and playing the same kind of games, being a knock at Konami. And the well-known phrase, I will be coming back, and I'm bringing my new toys with me. Basically just being an on-the-nose message, straight from Kojima, and being more of a teaser to Death Stranding than Silent Hills. The breakup song was already being written with PT, but we can't dispute that a full team was signed on and working on a Silent Hill game. I mean, Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus weren't attached to nothing originally, and keep in mind, big names like those don't come cheap. Kojima was going through some tough spells with Konami at the time, and him pouring his feelings into the game was what made PT such a memorable experience. Hey, we all missed the references the first time around. So what if Konami did too? Silent Hill is a fictional town in the mountains of Virginia. No, West Virginia. No, Pennsylvania. No, that's just ridiculous. It's a fictional town of Maine, because, you know, Stephen King stuff. Except it's supposed to be a Civil War town, and any history buff knows, there's not many of those in Maine. Like, none at all. Yes, I hear you. Citizens of Maine fought in the Civil War, but none took place on Maine's soil. So, why am I talking about Maine? Well... Why does so much of my research suggest that the Silent Hill Norman Reedus is walking through is in the middle of Maine? You could argue, well, you see out-of-state license plates all the time in real life. True, not necessarily done in fiction to give the audience a sense of location, though. This tells me that the town of Silent Hill, the very alive town of Silent Hill, may have been branching out a bit. <laughs> I'll elaborate. Radio reports covered a pattern of multiple similar homicides linked to social issues facing the average family. Doesn't sound like it's just a local problem. When something is worded like that, it sounds like a growing trend that impacts a much larger area than just the neighborhood. When I say Silent Hill may have been branching out, I mean that both figuratively and literally. Whatever evil brought Silent Hill to life got a little bored and lonely and needed to expand. Silent Hill always had ways of calling people to it originally, as we have seen in the games and the movies. It may have been time for that to change. The darkness of Silent Hill started to grow in the hearts of men through a new way of expanding. Silent Hill began to invade, and thus the title, Silent Hills. Granted, I think Silent Hills was also to tease the game having some online component similar to what Death Stranding ended up having. Maybe you'd find traces of other players and see what they've done, sort of like activating a bloodstain in a Souls-type game. Silent Hill was no longer just a singular town. 
but it was infecting these average families like a disease, and through corruption of man, turned more towns into a version of Silent Hill. There was a War of the Worlds reference spoken in Swedish, but I think that was not only just a nod to the old radio broadcast, but also Swedes having their own theory of what this Silent Hill invasion was, if that makes sense. The darkness of whatever created Silent Hill spread worldwide, and every culture had its own translation of what was causing this, sort of like a rapture or a doomsday event. Just like how every culture or nation has their own religion or translation of what God is. So Norman Reedus' connection to Silent Hill could have been anything. It could have been a direct or indirect connection to Silent Hill. His connection to Lisa, however, comes off to me as much more indirect based on the photograph we see of the man with Lisa when she was alive. Also, Lisa's interest in Reedus came off as not really a punishment, but more like trying to guide him and show him something. Aggressively, yes. Does she kill you in the demo? Absolutely. Is that canon? It may or may not be. Can you die in other video games and it not be canon? Well, duh. I mean, just pay attention to the story beats in the teaser. Your character doesn't seem to react much or at all upon seeing a fetus in a sink, peeking through a hole and somewhat witnessing a murder, seeing, forgive me Lisa, there is a monster inside me, and having to solve a hello puzzle by taking the first three letters of hello to form the phrase, I hear them calling to me from hell. Something doesn't add up if Norman Reedus is supposed to be directly linked to Lisa. Even if you think Norman is a Silent Hill formed clone of what the fetus could have been if it were allowed to have a life, yes, Silent Hill has done crazy stuff like that before too. Everything you see in PT is well in line with where Silent Hill has gone before. Silent Hill has done Yurei type enemies in Silent Hill 4. Silent Hill has done multiple Silent Hills in every single installment. At first you're in a fog, then the sirens go off and you're in Freddy's Nightmare until the sirens blare again and you're back in the fog. Then there's the more subtle elements in Silent Hill 2, where the rooms you revisit change out of nowhere. In PT, you're not technically in the same hallway. You're in what looks like the same hallway from the last, but something changes every time. Subtle at first, but blatant and obvious upon every door you walk through. Have you noticed another easy to miss detail? You're descending every time you leave the last hallway. The last thing you do before you open the door to the next hallway loop is descend some stairs. It's possible Kojima was planning to work some of Dante's Inferno references into Silent Hills. How could I possibly know all of this? Well, I don't for sure. I'm just forming conclusions based on the clues given to me. How do I know these were even clues? Well, even in non-interactive trailers or teasers to games, you get some idea of what the game is about and the gameplay elements. Even if the trailer is just a cutscene of Scorpion fighting Sub-Zero, the director incorporates what you might see in the next Mortal Kombat game by having the characters use environments or certain special moves. Professionals usually know what they want shown to the audience to give the audience an idea of what to expect from the main game, which is another reason why I think it was going to stay in the first person perspective. Konami didn't want to shell out a lot of cash to Norman Reedus for an unproven project. You may have noticed Kiefer Sutherland's lines were limited in Phantom Pain. It would have been the same for Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus being attached would have just helped the sales of the game. He would have equally been a marketing tool as well as a talent. The other little 2014 Tokyo Game Show trailer we got of Silent Hills was also in first person, so that's confirmation enough to me that the complete game would have stayed that way. You can thank the success of Amnesia and Outlast for that. Frankly, I think it would have worked for a concept like Silent Hill. You usually get bland looking average white guy protagonists anyway. No offense, Norman. Okay, bad argument fully immersing you into the role, especially during a time when VR was much more popular, was proven to be much scarier back then. You don't see the character because, well, you were the character. 
everything that was happening to the guy guided by your controller was actually happening to you. People tend to forget these things when they're fully immersed in such a game. It was 2014, and we were all familiar with the likes of PewDiePie, Markiplier, and other ripoff channels. It's why Kojima gave us a little reminder in the middle of the game that it's just a game, and it can't hurt you. Calm down, Kaiba. It's just a game. The phrase, it's just a game, is such a weak mindset. He was being tongue-in-cheeky. Or if you're British, then just plain cheeky. By the way, you probably could have expected more of Kojima's humor sprinkled in Silent Hills. I mean, he did with all of his other games. Don't think he would have refrained in Silent Hills despite the serious tone. I'm sure for added replayability, he would have included more easter eggs and funny unlockables after beating the game and unlocking a new game plus, like having different endings. Hey, even the original Silent Hill games did that. Remember the dog ending from Silent Hill 2? Absolutely legendary. So, yeah. Some of Kojima's dry and quirky humor would definitely have been at home with Silent Hills. Circling back to, I hear them calling me from hell, I don't think that would have just been a one-off thing. I think that would have been expanded on a bit more. As I mentioned earlier, Silent Hill was making its invasion and corrupting hearts of men. There seemed to be a bit of a father theme in P.T. It was specifically fathers who were hitting rock bottom and carrying out these gruesome deeds. Why? Possibly to reference the very first game, Silent Hill 1's Harry Mason was chosen by the reborn Alessa, and where was Alessa Gillespie's original father? We knew her mother Dahlia, but where was Mr. Dahlia? Did Alessa even have a dad? Do you think Silent Hills was going to touch on that by going back to the roots of the original story? Maybe Kojima was trying to incorporate another metaphor about Konami, referencing the sins of the father are to be laid upon the children. I'm sure Kojima would have incorporated a more positive message in his good ending, or rather best possible ending. The son shall not suffer the iniquity of the father, nor the father suffer the iniquity of the son. It's not unusual for Silent Hill to have some form of duality within a singular protagonist. We've seen that before too. I'm sure Reedus would have been a much deeper character with a complex character arc. The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? Spoken by a dirty Taco Bell bag. I think we would have gotten Norman Reedus playing more than one version of himself. Remember Silent Hill 3? I Hear Them Calling Me From Hell would have been done literally and tongue in cheek as you actually do get a phone call in PT informing you that you've been chosen. But it's more than that. Harry Mason was called the Silent Hill. James Sunderland was called the Silent Hill. Any game with Silent Hill in the title features a protagonist that is called the Silent Hill. Is this the right way? Silent Hill, which becomes the main protagonist, or any character of the franchise really, their personal hell. It's a town where your worst fears become a reality. Because, you know, they literally spawn right out of your heart. So, I think that little phrase, I hear them calling me from hell, was more of a reference of what we were supposed to expect from the full-length release. Literally and figuratively, something really would have been calling you from hell. There's a line from the movie Doctor Sleep, which I personally consider to be more of an unofficial sequel to The Shining. The line goes like this. No, no, Doc. You can put things from the Overlook away in boxes, but not memories. They are the real ghosts. You take them with you. In Doctor Sleep, Danny discovered a power to lock up the ghosts that followed him from the Overlook Hotel, and supposedly any other ghost that harassed him. He was also able to unlock them, but whether they were harassing him or not, they were within his mind, or in his version of The Shining. He tried to do that with a disturbing memory, but was hit with that line to remind us all that we can't run from our past. We have to own it. We have to carry who we are and what made us. In the Tokyo Game Show trailer in 2014, we saw through a first-person perspective a different type of hallway witnessing the hell of another character. A child this time, as the theme here was toys. A ball that turned into a head that vomited bugs, 
and electric toys that move down a hallway to meet probably the same young boy being eaten by a large worm creature that would then transform into something resembling a much larger ure. Then the creature chases the protagonist down a hallway and past doors that rapidly open and shut until the character stops at a particular door that beckons the protagonist. Also note the bloody hand marks on the wall, creating a trail toward the door, which kind of resembles what we've seen in Death Stranding with handprints all over naked Norman Reedus before appearing in the wet sand. I'm inclined to believe that because of Kojima's relationship with Konami at the time, there was going to be some kind of father-son storyline in Silent Hills. Specifically, a metaphor of Konami's treatment of Kojima and the involvement of the Fox Engine in more ways than just Lisa. Speaking of Lisa, I think we were about to see Silent Hills' successor to Pyramid Head. Maybe not in the form of Lisa, but at least another Yure similar to Lisa. Yeah. I think it's very likely we were about to get a new stalker monster that could have helped us move on from Pyramid Head, so that Masahiro Ito could have at least breathed a sigh of relief to crown a worthy successor. Well, that opportunity got trashed. It's likely PT was introducing us to a new stalker enemy that we wouldn't have been able to fight. Something like a Mr. X, Nemesis, or Pyramid Head. Or, for you kids today, a Lady Demetresque. You disgusting outsider! I think that's what Kojima was trying to set up with Lisa. Finally, we could have moved on from Pyramid Head, and we might have even gotten a final boss in the form of a transformed Lisa. Well, that got scrapped. So, what did we end up getting from the franchise? More Pyramid Head, but in the form of casino machines. Contain their guess. We know. Okay, I will defend to the death a company's right to want to make money. I mean, after all, it is up to you to support it or not, right? But their treatment of Kojima and not wanting to take chances with a fresh new Silent Hill that had already garnered a large audience hungry for a revival is just unforgivable. I get that the casino machines are an easy money maker, for a huge conglomerate like Konami, but they spit in the faces of fans and their own employees. All for what? Kojima incorporating metaphors of Konami's own treatment of him and his work into his work? They were already doing shady things before the casino machines with Ground Zeroes being a $40 demo. I think I'm more disappointed in the people that actually bought that crap at full price with their hard-earned money. What a waste! Yeah, you better play that game over and over and over again to get your money's worth. In 2014, I bought Turtles in Time for around the same amount and still got way more value for my dollar. I did end up buying Ground Zeroes for 5 bucks on a PSN sale. Still better than 40. Anyway, you are now armed with a load of useless information because it doesn't matter anymore. If we actually ever do get another Silent Hill game, it's not going to have the heart and soul that Kojima wanted to pour into his creation. The series was at a slump from the disappointing Homecoming and Downpour installments, then failing with a bug-riddled HD remaster of the second and third games. The series had hit rock bottom, and fans thought that was it. They were fed up with the series at that point. Most people were tired of seeing their beloved horror franchise get beaten into the dirt. Then, P.T. came along, and it ended with a very familiar melody. Silent Hill was back even if it was just for a few months. Wow, what a heck of a few months. Our imaginations were working overtime. Our speculations were ramping up. What could this mean? Is this a clue? Are we going to see more of this in the full release? Hype for the series was revived, and it took three men. Hideo Kojima, Guillermo del Toro, and Norman Reedus, the three wise men. Will we ever get Kojima approaching the horror genre again? Or is he spooked away from it now with no thanks to his previous employer? Who knows? All I know is, happiness and success are the best types of revenge. Kojima got mistreated and insulted by his former employer, so the best thing Kojima can do is continue to be successful on his own. I hope whatever game Kojima is working on next blows our minds. My name is Luke the Kook, and this is WASD FM. Now go! Let the legend come back to life.